Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Get Inspired with Charity Eswe. As always, I want to start with a big thank you to all our subscribers and viewers. Thank you for being part of this channel. You are all awesome. On today's episode, we have with us a special guest, Udo based in the largest city in Nigeria. She has touched so many lives across the globe in no small measures. She's a wife, a mother, an associate pastor, a mentor to so many. Please welcome with me our guest today in name of Pastor Mrs. Dr. Margaret Ola Albert. We are honored to have you in our midst today, Ma. Thank you for being here with us, Ma. Thank you very much. Before I dive into the question, I want to say a happy wedding anniversary to you, Ma. Today is your 26 years in marriage. Wow. I envy you. Thank you for being a good mentor to me and others out there. Thank you for laying down a good example. Thank you for being who you are. I pray as you celebrate your wedding anniversary today, God Almighty will increase your love for each other more and more. Your love will continually work stronger and stronger. You will live to celebrate a hundred years together in Jesus' name. Happy wedding anniversary, man. Thank you very much. Charity, I appreciate um, it's true. Amen to the prayer. It's true. Today is my wedding anniversary. And I just am so full of the goodness of the Lord. I'm grateful to God for preserving us and keeping us together in love. Thank you for having me here. Moving on, let's go straight into the interview. Firstly, man, could you introduce yourself? giving us an insight into who Pastor Dr. Mrs. Margaret Ola Abbott is. Thank you. I'm first and foremost a child of God, an intercessor, a wife, a mother, an associate pastor, a mentor, and the convener of the Distinguished King's Daughters Fellowship here in Ibadan. Thank you. We understand that you had a 12 years wait before you gave birth to a, a living child. Ma'am, could you kindly and briefly share with us how it came to be? Thank you. It was a case of um, several delays and um, losses. Um, I had delay at first and then I had, I got pregnant I got pregnant and had a child that lived for 53 days and after that the child went to be with the Lord and another series, another years of delay followed right after his demise and then after that um, God remembered me again and I got conceived then I the baby was the, the second child now had was a stillbirth so after the stillbirth, another long delay, years of delay, I must say, years of delay before the third one finally came in. And the third one is the living child to the glory of Christ. Thank you. How did you get through the experience? What anchored your spirit, soul and body? Empowering you to, to successfully go through the ordeal instead of compromising or was giving up for me compromise wasn't an option for because i'm a child of god so <laughs> compromising having a second a, a two chance or a two stand wasn't it at all and then um this scripture really came true for me at that period first corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 it talks about um there there had no temptation taken us that is not common so that god used the scripture to encourage my heart that it is common 
So that's the first thing, the, the first realization that sets me free. Because one thing the devil does is to pin you to a corner and to make you think that whatever you are going through is peculiarly, uh, you are the only one going through it. And because of that, that pressure alone is enough to put in a state that you start panicking and looking for alternative here and there. So I realized that when I saw people standing in group talking, I know they were not talking about me because that's something the devil does. does. It will isolate you to think that you are you are a, a, a thing, a person that people are mocking you in that situation. So I, I thank God for that scripture. That scripture made me to realize that temptation was common to men. I have my own. Every other person have their own. So if they are looking at me or whatever, everybody has something, issues there that they are facing, things that they are going through, things that they are dealing with. So I, I had my peace knowing that temptation was common to men, all men. Then the big part of that scripture says, but God is faithful. God is faithful. So whatever you are going through, if you latch on God's faithfulness, God will come through for you. So I, I had, I knew without any higher tower of doubt that God was faithful. I, I had my, that scripture gave me so much hope and confidence. So it's removed and reduced the pressure that I was uh, to be tempted or to give up, that God faithfulness will pull me through it. And then the final part of the scripture said, even in that same temptation, God will make a way of escape. So I knew that God's faithfulness for me will make a way of escape for me. So in that situation, I knew that there was there was an opening, there was an opening somewhere. All I need to do is to depend on God and allow him show me that way of escape. And of course, his way of escape will not be without his word. So God led me to that through his word. And another thing I, I went through during that period that I realized was that it was very important that I obtain victory through the word of God. Because as a woman's leader, I needed to, I uh, I need to go through some things, you know. I through my light, others should come to see light. Through my testimony, others should see their prophecy in it. That, ah, if God can come through for this woman in this situation, if I wait, surely my change will come. So it was very important for me to obtain my victory through the word because i can't lead people to where i have not been i cannot tell people that god will come true for them if i don't personally have a testimony to prove that god does is not a liar god is not a man that he should lie that whatsoever situation you are going through either in area of delay in conception delay in marriage or employment or your dreams not coming through that if you wait upon the lord surely your change will come so i needed to walk that walk with god so that by the time i come over to the other side i will be able to encourage someone that god saw me through certainly god will see them through so it was important that i do that and then um the fourth thing i did was that i gathered the word like i said earlier on that when you are going through situations like that that God gave me his word in 1 Corinthians chapter chapter 10, verse 13. And that word was that God will make a way of escape. So, and I said, God makes a way of escape through his word. So I I sat down with the scripture. I pick the scripture that ministered to me. And scripture like Romans chapter 11, verse 29. Um, James chapter 1, verse 17. John 1 verse 14, those scriptures took me through each stage. You know, I, I, I went through delivery, uh, delivery delay um, three times. So each of those scriptures ministered to me at each phase of that period, that season, at each phase. So I came out victoriously. And then I also did another thing. I gathered the testimonies of quite a number of people. I remember there was um, in my circle of influence, there was a lady that uh, lost her womb at delivery. In um, at delivery, she lost her womb. Her womb was removed, and the doctor told her that 
she has very sorry there is no way she was going to give birth and she should just resign to her feet and then she left that place not discouraged of course she was discouraged but because of she was a believer she stayed around people that could encourage her faith that woman gave birth to three children after her womb was removed so that every time i see her it's not that i read in a book i saw her she was a living testimony ah, i said if god can give a woman without a womb three children ah god will do mine and god eventually i held on to god and god eventually came through for me so thank you to so our next question how did this experience impact and or affect you as a person particularly as a woman what effect did it have on you personal uh, on your personal life marriage and ministry you know when a woman is going through such an ordeal um, particularly a number of years is, the years is counting and you are still waiting of course there are people that you got married with that are already with their second third children they are building the family and occasionally they invite you over to for their child's um, birthday or any kind of celebration naming it's, sometimes it's, it's overwhelming even though you are standing in faith but that could be discouraging to your own faith at times um in all of it I came, I, I came out with this, with this that every situation, no matter how difficult it is, it is for the glory of God. If only if the individual involved will permit, God will, will in the, the individual involved will partner with God. That's the word. Will partner with God and allow God to use that situation for His glory by them plugging into the Word of God by them. Um, standing on the principle of the word of God. So when I got this settled in my spirit that that situation, the long years of delay was for the glory of God, I, I, I was able to move on. I was really able to move on. And that, that was the impact it made on me. So when people come greeting me, sometimes they will see me pregnant and after a while they will notice that there was no pregnancy again and then they will say at a time some people will just walk up to me ah has it happening again have you lost it again and I mean, they won't even ask so it's like they, they had this mindset this mentality play, oh it will happen it has happened again once they don't see me with that uh, with a child so why well, didn't allow it to get to me so i knew that every negative situation was meant for the glory of god then too on my personal life that situation made me to become less judgmental because bad things happen to good people and it does not necessarily mean that um, delay in conception or losing your child is because of a sin or anything so i it helped me because i walked that path so i know that it wasn't anything i did it was just the way god wanted to glorify himself in my life so um, that experience opened my bowel of compassion. I became very compassionate. Even up to now, today, I, even up to now, I see people and I know, oh, they are, they are over a year in marriage and there is no conception. I start praying for them because of that issue, that, that um, situation that I've been through. So I'm, I'm being able to See, com have compassion on people that are going through such an ordeal and then talking about um, this still on the personal life issue when I I know the disappointments women go through when they are plugging in they are standing on the word of God or the doctor had promised them use this use that and then you get pregnant and then let's the, the doctor usually will say let's be hopeful this is the month this is your month do this do this and then at the end of that month the woman is not seeing the hope you know instead of seeing the uh, missing the period the woman is menstruating that visit that's that's a return of the monthly cycle is always very discouraging very discouraging very disappointing to 
women that have suffered in it. So mostly, um, a monthly cycle that is supposed to be a thing of joy or that is a thing of joy to some uh, is usually not joyful to um, people within mothers. So I understand this because I've been through it and it has really, really opened my bowel of compassion, like I said before. And then concerning the marriage, the effect of it on my marriage, oh, that long year of delay was a blessing in a way. It was a great blessing in a way in my marriage. Thank God for my husband is very supportive. He was very supportive and very is an exceptional man. So as with his love and support, uh, of course, family members will come, pressure will come from outside, but he was always protecting me, supporting me. That really opened my heart more to him. And over the years, because of that, we became more close. We became closer to one another. You know, we are very much in love. And it's all, even up to now, you know, because of that um, trying phase of our life. We knew we had no one except for God and each other. So we were really, we really grew closer. And then for the ministry, oh, this, um, the wait was worthwhile, was worthwhile. Because um, during that time of delay, I, like I said earlier on, when menstruation come, I'll break down, it will break me down, and I, I'll remember, oh, I'm not supposed to, my God is still alive, God is faithful, God is faithful. I'll wipe my tears and get back to the word of God, in and out, in and out, and then one day, it's just a call to me that, Margaret, what you are going through, you know, temptation is common to all men. What you are going through is common to other women. There are other women that are going through same. So will you sit down here and be whining or will you get up and do something? So I I was comforted by God. So out of that comfort of God, I stretched out my hand and I located some people that were also going through delays in childbirth. And I started a fellowship called um, the Ordained Mother's Ministry. And through that ministry, a number of women had conceived by the grace of God, they now have their children, they have a home. And so that was how I birthed that ministry, just because of that um, trial, that um, delay. So it has, in a way, affected my personal life for good, my marriage for good, and then for the ministry, very good. Thank you very much. Before we go ahead, I want to chip in a quick question. During the time of wait, was there any time you were excluded from being in a gathering or you were being mugged and finger being pointed at you like, oh, she's childless, oh, she being, she's this, she's that? Because I know in that part of, in Nigeria, like in African part of the world, people see people in waiting as witches or they've lived a useless life being a single lady. Was there any time, any point in time, you were um, like insulted because you were still waiting on God to have your own child? Severally, 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 severally. Um, in the church front, in the family front, everywhere, almost everywhere. And I must really say this, um, when a woman is going through this phase of life, um, you need a lot of love and you need a lot of, um, how do I put this word? You need to anchor your soul on God and especially on his word. It goes a long way to help. Um, there was a case, okay, let me just mention a scenario. Um, there was a case in the church, uh, some, a, a brother was trying to um, marry a sister and he felt that, oh, he should do, he, he, so it, what he wanted to do wasn't so good. So I tried to cancel him. I said, oh, don't do that. Do the right way. Um, go see the parents of the girl or this woman and settle. And then he turned, I, I, as I was talking, he just turned and said, Ma, I don't, I'm not asking for your cancel because I don't, I cannot house a, how, a, a woman without a womb in my house for a month. Uh, you have been married for months, uh, for years, you have not had a child. So I don't think you are in the right place to cancel me on a marital front. 
and it's it was a big slap it was it was the first time i will hear such that ah, so because of um childlessness um it's as if your mental faculty is not complete or balanced so it was that was i had several instances time will not permit me but such such and such were the cases then thank you generally people in today's in today's fast-paced uh, world do not like waiting or honoring the process which is unique to each individual be it in purpose business marriage finances achievement of goals and what have you everyone wants instant results why did you think this is actually it's um it's the it's the spirit of the age everything must be fast and fast and fast but we must realize that room was not built in a day and we must realize that if you jump up you jump down with it with speed but if you grow up you stay up so it is better we follow the pattern of growth than to rush into things and at the end of the day we might not have anything to show for it another thing is um, lack of worth when when we have not secure our word our worth in god we start using things we start allowing the pressure the external pressure to get at us oh your friend is progressing and if there is no progress in your life so to say we start looking for how to bend corners and how to hide here and there we should get our word from the right source where true worth is and which is from god through his word Thank you. Finally, ma'am, at some point or the other in, in, the, in our individual lives, we all are caught up in the process. That leg lag, that time lag, either trying to conceive or trying to give back to our desires, be it biological children or our dreams and goals. How would you advise such person who are stuck in, the, in this phase of their life. Also, foolproof steps should they take in order to successfully birth their desires and dreams. Thank you. To start with, I would like to say that the worst thing to do is to give up on your dreams and goals. Um, patiently wait patiently wait for them it will surely come to pass and then as you are waiting engage your mind start start improving on yourself get mentors that are doing people that are doing what you aspire to be or to do there are people that are doing well in that field go get their materials get around them if possible and then um, continue with your growth Continue to invest in yourself. Invest in yourself. And then surround yourself with people that believe with you, believe in you. Not naysayers, not people that will mock your dream. Uh, sometimes many times many a times the onset of a big goal or a big vision or a big um, dream always start very small and very insignificant. And so if you are not surrounded with um, with people that believe in your dreams, that believe in your person and in your dreams, they can mock you to cast away that seed because every great thing starts with a seed. And sometimes the seed does not look as though it would thrive through times. And so I, and my counsel would be surround yourself with people that believe in you. It could be a support of your wife, it could be a support of your husband, it could be a support of your mentor, it could be a support of friends, it could be support from your siblings, your parents, but surround yourself with people that can speak. And at that early stage or at that stage, though it's not everybody you open your dreams to, it's not everybody you want to um, reveal where you are going to or talk about it because some people they are still struggling on their own they don't even know what what to do with theirs so when you bring yours to them they can choke the life out of your seed so your your seed your vision your dream so please and please 
manage your the information don't let everybody have access to it even though i have said that you should surround yourself with people that believe in you and finally um plug in to the principle or plug in or agree to the principle of god's word and um, one thing is sure the bible says heaven and earth will pass away but not the word of god in other words not the principle of god none of his principle will go unfulfilled unaccomplished that will not prosper so um stay plugged into the word of god agree to the principle of the word and eventually you stand at the other side of your dream being fulfilled and achieved to the glory of god thank you uh man before we round up this question and interview this interview and answer question uh, section i want to chip in something i i know you're planning for um a TK, tdkd conference coming up um later in the month can you please tell us what TK, tdkd is and what the it entails what are we expected to happen individually in our life that day and everything you like just tell us what tdkd is man mm, thank you um, TDKD is the Distinguished King's Daughters Fellowship. Um, the female arm, um, and actually is an interdenominational women's fellowship, whereby we gather every month. But this particular one is our women conference, and so we want to celebrate God, celebrate ourselves, and thank, and then look at things that can help us. The theme of this year's own is Word Alive. So many things are happening out there that you need as believers we need to keep the word alive we need to spend time with the word of god because the word of god is life itself and it can sustain anything that is committed to so we want to spend time with the word um, bring the word alive in our situation hear the, the testimonies of people that have gone through challenges in life and that the word of god built out of such challenges and we want to also spend time fellowshipping and then drinking from the spirits of um, of great people people that are coming as in to minister in the event so that's what it is all about and the date is 24 to 26 of um, may and we'll have the services evening morning and then sunday we have a thanksgiving service that's what it, it is all about thank you wow thank you ma'am it's been an inspiring motivating and encouraging talking to you today dear viewers especially those waiting to buy one thing or the other I believe you've been encouraged, inspired, and motivated. I urge you to trust God and His plan for your life. Uncom uncompromisingly, go through the, your process, and you shall bath or achieve your desired goals. Thank you for watching, liking, sharing. Please subscribe if you are new and click on the bell button for the notification. Also feel free to drop your comments and questions below. Till next time, stay inspired. God bless.